folks, this is Pastor Mike Hoggard, pastor of Bethel Church in Festus, Missouri, and head of Prophetic Research Ministry with another Watchman video broadcast. We've got a couple stories right off the bat. Uh, actually, there's three things here that, that sort of go into what we talked about on last week's broadcast. The Nation of Fierce Countenance and its relationship to Deuteronomy 28, uh, things that are going to take place in the last days and so on. And uh, I had talked about Deuteronomy 28 um, a little bit, and there's another aspect of this, a couple of things that I want to share with you today. Uh, and then I want to throw in a teaching this week. Um, this, uh, I think, very practical in mind, especially um, the days that we're living in right now. I think that we need to decide whose side we're going to be on and what we're going to love and what we're going to hate. And so we're going to talk about that as we move on. This is actually based upon a sermon I did uh, probably a couple of years ago. I've preached this at camps, but I, I think the message is absolutely pertinent and timely. If we call ourselves watchers and we're watching everything that's going on in the world, we're watching the New World Order, we're watching black helicopters, we're watching everything... Um, I think we need to make sure that we're watching our own homes, watching ourselves, our own personal lives, uh, to make sure that w rather than wanting God to be on our side of all the conspiracy ideas, let's make sure that we are on God's side always and at all times. But here, a couple of news stories very quickly. Uh, this one, uh, big, big news this week, China and Russia quit dollar. St. Petersburg, Russia. China and Russia have decided to renounce the U.S. dollar and resort to using their own currencies for bilateral trade. Premier Juan Jiabao and his Russian counterpart Vladimir Putin announced late on Tuesday. Now, we had we kind of saw this coming. We've been dealing with this uh, for probably about a year now. Uh, every time Russia would make an announcement uh, about how they're not going to really use the U.S. dollar anymore, and China as well, they always had to throw in this phrase, new world order into it, or new economic order, a global economic order, or a new global economic world order, something like that. They always threw something like that in there. They always had to make sure that everybody knew that what they were doing now was going to shift from the old world order to this new world order. So China and Russia have decided to, there they are shaking hands, they've decided to like each other, which they really don't, or at least I don't think they do. And the, remember, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. And so Russia still has never really been the good friend of the United States of America, neither has China. Uh, they just don't mind us buying all their junk. Uh, and we do. We buy a lot of their... Oh, I, got, I got, probably got one right here. Uh, buy all their junk. But anyway, um, them wanting to stop using our currency to trade back and forth... Um, what it what it shows is that the United States is not what it used to be. We're living, number one, we're living on borrowed time. Number two, we're living on borrowed money. Who do we, who do we borrow it from? China. Uh, we're living on, we're living on the wealth and the prosperity the work ethic, the morality of our grandfathers. That's what we're still hanging on to. I don't like to be doom and gloom, but I don't think it's going to last very long. I, I really don't. Especially when China and Russia have already said, you know what, China, China knows. China's going, you know what, uh, let's look in our accounts here and let's see how much, you know, they owe us, they owe us a gob of money. I don't think we're going to use their currency anymore because to us, it's worthless. I got some verses to share about this here just a little bit. Uh, here's another one dealing with China. The, the contrail. You remember the contrail video? A helicopter flying around, uh, Los Angeles News helicopter, uh, took a video of what looks like a large, gigantic missile flying up into the atmosphere. Okay? And um, they wanted to explain it away like it was a, like as a commercial airplane or like a, I even heard on the day after this happened, I even heard uh, what was they say they were saying some amateur rocket people were were shooting off rockets. 
Why didn't they just say, hey, there were some kids having a bottle rocket war and one of them got away, okay? Uh, here's an article according to World Net Daily. Now, before I read this, I'm going to say this. I don't know what it I don't think that it was a commercial airline. I don't know what it was, okay? But I saw what you saw and I'm going, that's, that's not an airplane. Let's read the article. According to experts, mystery contrail was from a Chinese missile. Muted response was decision, decision made by the president himself. Although the U.S. Defense Department and North American Aerospace Defense Command have speculated publicly that the unidentified contrail of a projectile soaring into the skies off the California coast and recorded by a KCBS television crew came from a jet <laughs> and posed no security threat to the U.S., several experts are raising provocative and disturbing questions about the government's official response reports Joseph Farah's G2 Bulletin. Two governmental military experts with extensive experience working with missiles and computer security systems have examined the television video and concluded the mysterious contrail originating some 30 miles off the coast near Los Angeles did not come from a jet, but rather they say the exhaust and billowing plume emanated from a single source nozzle of a missile probably made in China. They further suggest the missile was fired because it pro it pro it, they probably left a chemtrail of fortune cookies. and it's, That's how they knew. Uh, they further suggest the missile was fired from a submerged Chinese nuclear submarine off America's coast and point out that the timing of the alleged Chinese missile shot coincided with an increasing confrontation between the U.S. and China and was likely meant to send a message to Washington. Now... Before I get into the scripture part of this, I will say, and I don't know what this was, but this article, to me, makes the most sense of anything. I, we don't really know. We don't really know what goes on in the inner corridors, what they call the E-ring of the Pentagon. We don't really know what goes on in the White House. We don't really know the phone calls that have been made between Jing Zhong Chao of China and so-and-so of the United States. We don't know. But it could very well be at some point that somebody from this country said the wrong thing to the wrong person, which was China. And China just snuck a nuclear submarine over about 30 miles off our coast, made a phone call and said, hey, look out your window, and fired off a missile. I don't know that that's what happened, okay? But I will tell you, that's a, that's a I mean that's a pretty good plausible idea. Um, if this was China, this goes along with number one uh, telling us that your dollar's no good. You know why? Because you owe us a bunch of them, and we're telling you they're no good. The ink is still wet, by the way. And uh, number two, we know we know that China constantly barrages the Pentagon. Uh, NORAD, uh, different places like that, our defense systems, computer systems, they're constantly barraging our nation's computer system with attacks. They're trying to figure out how to get in. And in some cases, they got in. Okay? They got it. Now, keep, th keep all this in mind. This is the nation that at one time in this world, they didn't have nothing. They had absolutely nothing in this world. How did they get where they are? Um, they got where they are from the, from the Americans. We bought all of their junk. We said, hey, you know what? You make it cheaper than we do anyway. Why don't you make it? We'll buy it. Of course, we'll have to fire all of our people and they won't have to buy. Well, maybe they can still buy stuff, but they'll have to buy it on credit. Then we'll go in more into debt. This is the vicious cycle that we're in. But anyway, China is not now our best friend in the whole world. It really isn't. <clears throat> and at some point, we know that America will stop being the head of all of the nations. Let's go back now to Deuteronomy chapter 28. Here's what the Bible says. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven to give the rain unto the land in his season, and to bless all the work of thine hand. And thou shalt...